don't know how should I introduce her. Here's Melody. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, here's Melody. Even though it looks like we're going to Antarctica, <laughs> it's really cold down here because the air conditioning. There she is. Is she not waking up? She was awake like two seconds ago. We made her too comfortable. Say hi to everyone. Hi everybody. <laughs> you waving? <gasps> There you oh. go. Oh, the fur baby. Dexter. Okay. This is not working. He's too close. Hello. She was just so excited to be in a video that she couldn't make it. It's so funny when we want her to sleep. She's, oh, why are you so sad? Why are you so sad? Does she look like me? Yeah. <laughs> She's smiling kind of. <laughs> well, here's our baby. She's sleeping. It's what newborns do a lot of. Yep, very exciting, as you can oh, see. There you go. She got yeah, wave. she's waving to you guys. <laughs> she makes lots of noises. She's smiling, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Way to pull your way to make some content. <laughs> what are you doing? Nope. Eyes open for a second. She's just so cute. I keep trying to get cute angles of her. Okay, well that's why I took a bunch of uh, video clips to show you guys during the first month of having her because I figured this might happen. So enjoy the clips and then we're gonna pass her off to my mom so we can uh, talk to you guys. Hi, you're wide awake. Hi. Hi. Got the hiccups? Yeah. Got the hiccups. Such a little squirmies. Are we taking a ride? Got mommy's fingers. I love you. You're so cute. Melody well, seems to like it. See, this is nice. This is nice. Melody. You like your piano? Yeah. What are you doing? Kicking? You kicking. Oh, bless you. <laughs> okay, now that it's just us now. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so cold down here. I haven't been down here in a month. I have gotten lots and lots of questions from all of you guys about everything that's been going on the past month. It's, it's weird that content's been going up, so I've still kind of been here, but I haven't been here. This is the first time I'm back in a month. Okay, so a lot of the questions that I got was revolving around the birth story and what happened. So I figured I would try to, in the smallest amount of time, tell you a little bit about the birth story because I know everybody's so interested in it. Melody was born, I think, when I was 39 weeks and two days. Yep. And I wasn't expecting it to be that week. I thought, because they tell you for your first baby, it's usually a slow process. It, they usually go past the date. So that morning I had a doctor's appointment and he said that I was progressing, but I wasn't that far. So at the doctor, uh, there's, I'm not gonna explain what it is, but they do a thing called a membrane sweep, which kind of helps progress your labor. But he said, because it was my first kid and I wasn't that far along, it was probably like a 30% chance that it would do anything. So I was just like, not gonna happen. My mom and I, we did that. We went to Starbucks afterwards. We came home and we thought it was a good idea to start organizing our office, our upstairs office. Yeah. So all like the filing paperwork, like really boring stuff. So I was sitting in there and I started feeling not great, but the doctor had told me that that might happen. He was like, you might get bad cramping. He was like, that's good. If you feel that, just keep doing whatever you're doing to keep it going. So I just kept sitting there doing the yeah, filing. just sitting on the floor. And then eventually it just got too bad. And I was like, I, I should go sit on the couch and relax or something. So I did, but I felt like it was coming in waves, which was weird. I went to the doctor at 9.30 a.m. And then that started happening really bad around 3.30 p.m. And I have an app on my phone that counts control Attractions to start timing it to decide when you should go to the hospital. So just for funsies, I didn't think I had <laughs> contractions, but I was like, oh, let's just see like what these are. And they were so irregular and close together that I was like, that there's no way that that's what this is. They were coming every minute, two minutes, like all over the place and not that bad. And my mom was here at the time. She came like a week early. She wanted to be here whenever I went into labor so she could help out and watch Dexter for us while we were at the hospital. And she's a nurse too. So I was asking her, and I was sitting there and I had heard only one out of 10 women have their water break. So I wasn't expecting that to happen to me. And I was sitting there and all of a sudden I just felt like a 
pop and then ran, got up and ran to the bathroom. Didn't even say anything. Yeah, you just <laughs> got up and you kind of like hustled to the bathroom. I opened the door and I was like, I think think my water broke like just the whole process you would think oh my water broke my contractions are happening we're going i had no idea because it all happened not the way that i had thought that it was going to so we called the doctor to ask what we were supposed to do because when your water breaks you're supposed to usually go in pretty quick yeah i remember when you said your water broke i just like snapped yeah into he started grabbing the bag. i just started like grabbing everything like <laughs> My bag of snacks, our, our go bags, what do you call yeah, them? Yeah, the go, hospital The bag. hospital bags. We luckily had finished those. Yeah, like, we had those weeks ahead of time. Grabbed all them, put everything downstairs, filled up our water bottles. So the doctor obviously said, he said because we had been dealing with um, like a, a scare, like the day before we had to go get an ultrasound for Melody's heart because they were concerned that it was like slightly enlarged, which they said, they said could be totally normal. Um, this plays into a big part of it too. This literally, that literally happened the day before yeah. we were like, like so stressed out we were we had to run to specialists because they were really worried about the baby's heart but then luckily they didn't they couldn't find anything serious so they said no go with your original plan deliver at your regular hospital we're sure it's fine we'll just check her when she's born anyway because of all that my doctor said usually i'd tell you to labor at home for a little bit and then go but he was like you should probably just go to be safe so we left at like 4 30 and i was like crying on the way out because every time i saw dexter dexter made me super sad for some reason out of nowhere and i never cry yeah so it was freaking everybody out that I was crying my mom and Bobby out that it was I was crying and then we got to the hospital and I was like well I'm gonna drop you off the front door I'll grab everything and I'll meet you inside she's like no we'll just go park and I'll walk and I'm like <laughs> you're in labor probably or you're, yeah whatever. We still, I still had no idea what like I, I figured so what happened was usually when you your water breaks you still have like you could have 24 hours before you deliver the baby before it becomes a problem and my contractions weren't that bad so I was like I probably still have a lot of time let me just walk with you we'll help with the bags oh, by the time we sure. got to the room and checked in it was like 5 30. so already only in labor two hours maybe mm -hmm. i had heard such good things about the nurses i was like ready for my really sweet awesome empowering nurse we get there and the nurse that's on staff was like coming off probably i don't know an eight or 12 hour sh shift and we were her last people and she was just trying to like, get us into the system so she could go home basically i don't know she was just out of it she, she did was not she was not helpful kind of like distant and just wanted to like do all the processing and like that paperwork, like everything computer, ask all the questions. Yeah, she was asking me like just basic questions. She wasn't yeah. giving me any info. She like, kinda, it was oh. like a little, she was a little cold. Just kind of like, yeah. oh, okay, you're here to have a baby. And, and we're like, yeah, we're here to have a baby. Can you be a little bit more? Yeah, and usually when they tell you, you usually go to the hospital and they'll like check if you're dilated to see if they're gonna keep you or send you home. Yeah. Which she didn't do. She didn't never checked if I was dilated, how far I was, nothing. So we just kind of went through it. Like contractions were getting worse and worse and worse. She eventually left right as it started getting kind of bad. Yeah, it was around seven o'clock. The set, the new nurse came in. It was awesome. Yeah, she was awesome, but she like walked into madness. They all said they were expecting me to be in labor for hours. So they weren't rushing or anything. Thing, yeah. um, because especially because it was my first baby, they were concerned because the contractions were one right after the other, and they were concerned that the cord was wrapped around the baby's neck. Like yeah, so neck or so what was happening? They or... weren't they weren't talking to us, but like in between, I felt bad because I'm like in pain, so I was like half hearing everything that people were saying, and Bobby was just there. They kept saying we most likely are gonna have to do an emergency C-section. Was like the last thing that I wanted to do. That was like my biggest fear going into it. They were like, we might have to do an emergency section. Your baby's in distress. Her heart rate would shoot up every time she'd have a contraction. And then when she wouldn't, it would go back yeah. down. And so they basically they thought I was I was gonna be doing it for hours. So yeah. they were like, the baby can't handle it for hours. So their thought process was, they were trying, they were asking like when I ate last to make sure that I could go through surgery, like all this stuff. And I was like, I feel like I have to push, is that normal? Like, cause nobody still, nobody had checked if I was dilated or anything. I think they thought the first nurse checked me and she never did. She said, has anybody checked you? We were like, no. And she's like, all right, let me check you. So she checked and she's like, oh, uh. She's, she's like, like, you're fully dilated. I see the baby's head. Yeah, she we're about like, to have this baby. We're about to have the babies. I didn't have an epidural, which was my other biggest fear that I was gonna somehow have the baby way too quick and not be able to have any pain meds or anything. I don't even know. Everything happened so fast. So 
basically once they found out that she was fully dilated and the baby's head was like she could like see her and like (laughs) the nurse could feel her three more nurses come in start getting lauren's like legs ready for labor our doctor wasn't there yet till the one to deliver she was stuck in traffic we found (laughs) out so they call the on-call doctor they're getting him in i'm like right by lauren's side all this chaos is going on she's just like focused on breathing and pushing (laughs) and there was so my plan was to be as like just be with Lauren. I didn't want to, like, cut the cord. I didn't want to see nothing. I'm kind of queasy when it comes to blood and stuff like that. There was no time for that. I saw pretty much everything. <laughs> I wasn't queasy at all. I think it was just adrenaline <laughs> taking over and just me being concerned for Lauren and the baby. And the nurses start... are awesome, by the way. We went from having one nurse, yeah, and was... then the next time I, the next thing I remember is just having all these nurses yeah, being like, four all right, girl, you got it. <laughs> there was our, like, the, that nurse, that second nurse came in kind of, like, leading the team, basically. So they start teaching Lauren how to, like, push. I see the doctor coming in and the chaos, and, like, everyone saying things. I don't know what they're saying. Just, like, it felt like an emergency, emergency situation. I mean, doctor comes in, <laughs> he comes in, he goes down, and it was just like, he's like, do this, get me this, get this. It was four cycles of pushing not like four pushes but like a cycle of pushing through a uh, contraction i'm by lauren just yeah, like trying to keep her <laughs> focused trying to like help you know talk as calmly as i can looking at her holding her hand trying to like help breathe with her and all of a sudden boop yeah they didn't even like give warning it was, I had no idea the doctor was just takes the baby like... and plops her right on lauren i'm like oh she like <laughs> there she is lauren you did it there she is you just gave natural birth there's melody there's our baby they bring melody over to like bassinet crib thing where they check on yeah. her and go to take photos of her and they're like yep everything's good she's checking out good you know <clears throat> held her like hand or try to like put my finger by her hand she's grabbing my finger oh and then they wrap her up they bring her over to lauren <laughs> 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 I love you. I love you. You're so good. So, good. so she was going to go to the NICU right away just because of that heart issue we had talked about first. It was to, to go there and monitor her and to eventually get an echocardiogram either like the night she was born or the, it ended up happening the day after. Basically, we only got to hang out with her for... Hang out. Hang out. <laughs> Chill. We got, to, we got to have our time with her for like... A couple minutes. A couple minutes yeah. before they took her away, which sucked. Yeah. But I think it was such a whirlwind that it didn't set into like later that night. Or it the didn't. Next it was. Uh, for I was. Me, just, I was kind of just like, oh, I get to like rest for a second. Yeah. For like, me, it was just like such a relief. Like she's out. Lauren's good. Melody's good. She's healthy. She's going to the best place she can go. Lauren's good. Let's just so intense. Yeah. I couldn't sleep. So that whole night, I couldn't sleep just because I was constantly replaying everything in my head and just being like. <laughs> How so how sorry. did this we went we went from like sitting on the couch relaxed and chilling to a couple hours later having our baby. Yeah. I was just and also I was just so happy because Lauren was done being <coughs> pregnant because I felt so bad for the last the last like what two to three weeks was pretty rough heartburn yeah. and just oh yeah the last couple weeks because everything up to then was I would say was a pretty good yeah. pregnancy. It was, I had no complaints up yeah. until that point. I know it was painful because Lauren doesn't curse much. Like she'll curse like she'll say like the s word or like but she's not like a curser. Like I, I curse. I say cur I curse a lot. Lauren doesn't curse. She was like under her breath like like cursing and just kind of <laughs> like not like scream but just like under her breath no. like cursing and i laura i could tell she was in pain but like was it yeah. as bad or as painful giving natural birth as you thought it was well there they said question on a scale of one to ten how much did giving birth hurt which is funny because that's what they kept asking me they were like on a scale of one to ten how bad is the pain like yeah. before the baby came when out you, when we first got in you said like a four or a six yeah and then it was like uh, nine or ten. Yeah, it was going up very fast. Yeah. They were like, we're not going to give you the epidural until you're at a, like a ten. I was like, and okay. then it was like five minutes later. All right, I'm out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. It was definitely like probably some of the worst pain I've ever experienced. But I also like haven't you, gone through a lot of pain. Did you feel like you were going to pass things. out from it or no? No. That's what I was always... No. I, some women do. They, oh, do yeah. fall, they do pass out. No, I think the adrenaline was just... That's basically, your is. body and your brain is just like, get this... <laughs> get <laughs> I was it just out. Like, get this thing out. Get this baby out. Like... In the beginning, you're you're it's painful, but you're just like, I hope I can get the epidural. I hope I don't get a C-section. I hope this isn't that bad. And then toward the end, you're literally like, do whatever you need to do to get the baby out. I don't care. So I have no idea what having an. What epidural would you practice. rather? Would I you mean, rather have it the way it went and it was quick, or would you rather be in labor for 24 hours with an epidural? I feel like kind of what you the went way, through. Yeah, the way that kind we of went, like it sucked in the moment. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not. I would feel like just. I'm get not it excited done to with. go through that yeah. <laughs> again ever. But. 
I think because it was so fast, thank God. Yeah, I think it, from from my perspective, it wasn't that bad. Even though it was like kind of felt like emergency ish kind of a situation of how yeah. quickly it was everything definitely went. Scary. I think if you got checked right away and they're like, "Wow, you're." dilated yeah she's coming been, it, would have, been it would have been a little better pace wise but for me it was just like so quick it was wow, like there was no time to kind of like you couldn't like it's take, happening take it in yeah i couldn't really take it in after the baby's born it's just like all the pain is gone yeah. it's the weirdest thing i don't know people told me that and i was just like there's no way that you don't feel anything just gone <laughs> you go from like dying to just being like, oh hey and start talking to people again and it was it's such a weird crazy experience it's for sure. Not I just say you did it. Yeah. You went through natural birth, and I feel like that's kind of like something you may, yeah, I went through it. It sucked, but yeah. Hey, yeah, you can do I it. I went through the, the most painful thing they say that you can go yeah. through with no drugs. After the two hours, they moved us to the recovery room, and we didn't have Melody the first night because we had to wait for the next morning to get yeah. her heart. The best part about the first night was eating. I don't know why, just like... Oh, yeah. And the, the hospital food was so good. Yeah. I don't know why. It was great. <laughs> it was really good. They had her on, like, a, a camera, or like, um in the and I see in the NICU. There, she was, like, on a live stream, I guess you could say, so we could watch her. It was pretty cute and pretty emotional. Just yeah. watching her, I'm like, there she is. I said I would just, just kept getting, her. I kept getting so sad because I was like, that's when it started setting in. I was like, they won't let me see my baby. Yeah. Like, what's happening? Oh yeah, so that's the other great part of it. I wasn't supposed to get COVID tested because when we first got there, they saw on my charts that I had COVID back in January. And they were like, oh, well, we're not going to test you then because there's no way that you can have it again. So then I had the baby, nobody tested, but because the baby went to the NICU, they were like, oh, you know what? It's procedure. We need everybody who goes into the NICU to get tested. So they tested me. They did like the rapid test. And then later on that night when the nurse came in, she was like, um, she's like, by the way, your COVID test came back positive. I was like in shock. I was like, there's no way. Yeah. I was like, I have literally been at home on the couch I had a besides feeling it was my gonna, doctor's I knew it was gonna come back positive because yeah. it's the rapid test and we had it. But all the nurses agreed. They were like, there's no way that you have, she said you have no symptoms, right? I said, absolutely none. No symptoms. I haven't been around. The only people I've been around all are vaccinated. I haven't been going anywhere. And I know how rare it is to get reinfected. If you look it up, it's extremely rare, especially that close together getting COVID twice. Cause at first I was like, oh no, they're not gonna let us go to see the baby. This is gonna ruin everything. Oh yeah, which some people asked if you have to like wear a mask in labor. I did. But you took it off. But then I took it off when I was actually in the pushing part. They put an oxygen yeah. mask on yeah. you. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the oxygen. On. That was nice. <laughs> but then in our recovery room, we had to keep it on like when people would come in and out, which is actually another question I'm stepping on again. A lot of people asked how it was having a baby during COVID. Super annoying. Yeah, we had to do like- Extremely annoying. We had to do a lot of extra tests. Well, only because we had COVID. Yeah. If we didn't have COVID, they wouldn't have made us True. jump through as many hoops during the pregnancy. My theory is that, so when we would go get the ultrasounds, she was a little, her weight was kind of low. It wasn't dangerous, it was just a little low. We're both small people. It was kind of like, oh, okay, she's fine. And then all of a sudden we told the one ultrasound tech that we had COVID and I, everything changed, the attitude changed. Yeah. I feel like they wanted to use point. us as like a study case is, oh, these people have COVID. Let's see what happens to them. And, well, listen, it's good to be extremely cautious with babies and COVID, but it just felt kind of like they were they wanted to use us as an example. I heard them say that they were using the placenta or they were keeping the placenta because we had COVID. Yeah. Like the hospital was keeping it, meaning that they were probably running tests and stuff on it, which is fine. But it's interesting that they never asked if they could take yeah. it. I don't want it. But like, <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that. I saw the doctor yeah, take sorry, that, that out that's, and everything. And it was not. just like, oh, there that is. But I'm fine with them testing it, making sure that like COVID yeah. won't affect pregnant ladies in the future yeah. or babies. I finally got Melody back the next morning. It's not a fun recovery process yeah. for sure. The first like week is rough yeah. recovery wise. I had a pretty big surgical cut down there that I had a lot of stitches for. So that was not fun <laughs> the first couple days. I needed a lot of help. You were very good with <laughs> helping me. But yeah, we finally got her back. Her heart and everything is good, thank God. Her weight is good. Literally everything we had to stress and worry about the whole pregnancy ended up being good. Yeah. How did it feel to hold your baby for the first time? So many people ask me this and I watched a lot of vlogs where I like, cried when people have held their baby for the first time because of the birth yeah it, everything i was just so like happy I, and to yeah. have her like it felt awesome to hold i was i was more in shock 
They yeah. like put her on me, and I was like, "It's over." Like yeah. what? <laughs> like because I was expecting so much more of a different bird. I didn't really hold her until the next day. Yeah, I so think I it was more sad. I almost cried when I was holding her when they cleaned her up and brought her back to like let me hold her for a little bit, and then yeah. they were like, "Okay, we have to take." Like they, the nurses were like nicely trying to rip off the band aid of like, "Hey, we have to take her from you now." So that was sad. But yeah, one of the questions was, "How are you doing mentally after giving birth?" I got postpartum <laughs> depression with my first son. No one warned me that could happen. I was very aware that that something that yeah, I was gonna happens. Say, I, I feel like I knew about it. They, yeah, because they like scare you so much about it. They're like, make sure if you have any of these feelings that you tell somebody. I definitely didn't have postpartum depression. There's something that I didn't know that existed that was called the baby blues, which you can have the first like week or two. And it's mainly just because your life just went through a major change. You're not sleeping as well and your body's hurting and your hormones are going crazy. But like I would cry over every, like anything. I would like start talking to Bobby about something and start getting choked up and be like, I have to go. Like there was a couple times I'd like excuse myself, but it was never bad crying. The first two weeks are definitely the roughest. Yeah. For sure. Cause you're still healing. You're learning everything. You're going from like having full sleep to like not much sleep, <laughs> not knowing if you're doing everything right. Uh, thankfully we had, my mom was staying, she's still staying with us. Yeah. That's why we're filming this right now. Um, before she leaves this weekend so that uh, Bobby can be in the video because otherwise when I'm filming he's gotta, gotta watch her. Thank God she was here because she took her in the mornings and then we could actually sleep and not be total zombies during the day. And then Bobby's parents came over a lot to try and help so we've definitely had a lot of help. Just like every baby. She has yeah. good days, she has bad days, she has ba days where her stomach's hurting her, where she's going through a growth spurt. And there's some days she's chill. Like today was a really good day. Today's been good. Last night was Last good. Last night was very good. That was like the most sleep I've gotten in a little while. Yeah. Which brings me to my next question. Is Melody a good sleeper? Does she wake up a lot at night? Just questions about her sleeping routine. I have read so much stuff about babies and sleeping since, cause we, we felt like we had it right in the beginning. She was sleeping like four to three hour spans, which was really good at night. So we thought we had it down and then all of a sudden she switched and started doing like every hour, or every two hours or like, she would sleep really good in the beginning of the night before we would even go to bed yeah. and then sleep terrible the rest of the night when we went to bed. Right now she's sharing a room with us, but her sleeping is okay. Yeah. She has, last night she was great. She slept for like a five hour span for the first time in the beginning. And then she used to wake up, the good time was when she would wake up at, we would put her down at eight. She would wake up at 12 and then she would wake up at four and mm. then she would wake up at like seven or eight. Yep. And that was great because one of us would take the 12 o'clock, the other one of us would take the four o'clock and we'd each only have one get up time in the middle of the night. Now she kind of wakes up at like 12, <laughs> three, four. Yeah, there's... <laughs> like, but last night she did really good. She woke up at two and then she woke up again at 4.30, five. So it was a little better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's she's, to be. That's it, she's doing good. She's doing okay. She sleeps, she likes her swing during the day. You can put her in her swing and rocks her and she stays in that for a while. And she also loves to be held. She'll <laughs> fall asleep in our arms like like nothing. And then you put her in the in the bassinet and after she starts moving and is... crying. Oh yeah, the other question that I saw a lot was about Dexter and Melody. Like all, so many questions were asking, how did Dexter react when he first met Melody and how long did it take Dexter to get used to Melody? When he first met her, he was fine. He was anxious for sure. Yeah, anxious, excited. I was doing a lot of research on how to properly introduce babies to dogs. So we each, when we came home from the hospital, like each of us went in individually to say hi to him so he can get his energy out. And then we brought her in because she was supposed to keep it calm. But he was really good with her. Maybe the first, every time we would go in the middle of the night to have a diaper change, he used to like follow us back and forth because he was so yeah. anxious and didn't know what was happening. Why this like little creature was crying in the middle of the night and why we were go getting up with her, I guess. He's like over her. He's used to her, he's, <laughs> he's all good. He, sn he goes up and he sniffs her and he'll give her you know, a little lick kiss every now and then. And in the middle of the night when we go to change her and stuff, he just stays in his bed now. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. He's used to her. <laughs> yep. Somebody asked what the best and worst parts about being a parent are so far. I mean, the best parts are you have a kid to raise. <laughs> the, best. the best part is you have a, a child to raise. Uh, <laughs> like them being cute. I mean, I don't, Okay, so like one of the like most enjoyable parts is when she's crying or cranky and you figure out what's oh, wrong yeah. and she, you calm her down and she's just, and you put her to sleep. Like that feels great. Like yes, I did it. I figured it out. I calmed her down. I put her to sleep. The worst part is when you do that and you think you did it right and then five ten minutes later she starts crying and you're like, oh, God. Yeah. like last night it happened <laughs> and I was like she was asleep. I fed her. She stopped eating. Like I don't know. And then I picked her up. 
I held her on my belly, pat her a little bit, 10, you know, 5, 10, 20 minutes later, put her back in the bassinet, out. So it's like, I think it's, for yeah, me... Yeah, we gotta start doing that, because yeah. she, she seems to like that. Because she wakes up and she's she's crying, we're like, oh, she wants to eat, but it's not always... We're yeah. trying to learn what else. We're trying to, like, distinguish her cry. When it's, she's pretty easy, I would say, like, when it's, like, an hysterical, like, hey, wah, wah, yeah. cry, it's like, all right, she either needs to be changed or fed, but when it's just like a, man, kind of cry, you're like, all right... <laughs> She's uncomfortable yeah. or just whatever. <laughs> yeah, she's obviously a very easy, quote unquote, easy baby. Like yeah. I wouldn't say every, like any baby is an easy baby. So you still have to do a lot with them at all times. She had a couple bad, not even colicky episodes, but like gas episodes where she would just cry and nothing would help. But that was that's definitely the minority yeah. of the days. And she hasn't, knock on wood, I think. Every time she has one of those days, we're like, all right, what can we change? Like, <laughs> is it her bottle? Is it, like, the way she's sleeping? What she's sleeping in? So it's, like, problem solving. A lot of problem solving. Yep. That's a good answer. Oh, yeah, everybody's already asking if we're having more kids. I think we're going to, like, figure out this part of our lives yeah. first. <laughs> it's just hard. It's just the pregnancy is nine months, and then the labor, and it's it's intense. It's, it's hard. I, it's, like, it's hard on, you know, Lauren. It's... It's a lot, especially, you know, during COVID was tough too, but yeah. if we do decide to have another baby, I think we'll obviously be more prepared or used oh, yeah. to it, so we'll know what we're in We've for. gone through the worst of it. Like, we went through a pandemic baby, yeah. and then also, like, the craziest birth. We think we want to have another kid, but we're yeah. not like, all right, once you're ready, we're going to have another kid. It's yeah. just kind of like, kind of like I'm how not... we felt with, with having the first kid. It was like... We both want to have kids. We're not sure we're ready. And then we were both ready around yeah. the same time. We talked about it. All right, let's have a kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the way I'll play it. Yeah. Like, we kept saying, we're like, oh, we'll be happy if we have a kid or yeah. if we don't have a kid. But if let's two, just see how life But if a year, then... two years from now, we're like, we're happy with Melody. We don't want to have another kid. We won't. And vice versa. If we're like, all right, ready for another one. Yeah. Then we will. I said, I was like, nothing about the experience so far has made me been like, I never want to do this again. This yeah, is horrible. Yeah, definitely. There's been nothing. But I, uh, I'm i waiting. I basically have to wait for the point where I'm just like, yeah, let's do all that again. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> There's a couple of things I think we want to do with her first. And like, we yeah. want to do like, we both we haven't been on like a real vacation since our honeymoon. <gasps> So we want to take like a real vacation. We're not in a rush. Basically. We don't. I think li <laughs> it's best in life not to have a plan. Have like a loose plan or like kind of what you want. Don't be like, all right, in 18 months from now when you're good, it's like, no, no, no. Don't, don't. Life throws too many curveballs at you to try and have a plan. Oh, and then lastly, uh, a lot of people were asking about our thoughts on Melody being treated different when she got older because of what I do for a living or what we do for a living and asking if Melody's gonna be in videos. As far as I am concerned, I don't have any plans to have her in videos. For one, right now she's a baby. Like she's yeah. not gonna do much <laughs> videos. I don't have a desire to have her be a main part of the channel. Like yeah. this is my thing that I started and then like Bobby helps and yeah. does what he can for it. Yeah. But um, like me and Dex are kind of like side characters yeah. or like, you know, whatever. I, I don't want her life to be dictated no. or have any impact because of what I do. Well, we've been posting a lot. Yeah, if you want to see pictures or updates of our real life, we do post those on Instagram stories and um, sometimes on Twitter. Yep. But I, because I'm trying to find this middle ground. Like right yeah. now I'm okay with posting about her because she's a one month old. Like she's going to change so much what she looks like. There's nothing like there's nothing embarrassing about being a baby right now yeah. that she would that would come back to like haunt her later yeah. or that something she wouldn't want on the internet. But at the same time, I feel like if I was like I'm not posting anything about her, um, you're I don't restricting want anything. Yourself. No, but I feel like then people look for it harder. Yeah, like true, when true. you when you we we'll share like, what we want to share. It's like when people don't show their faces, like YouTube creators don't show yeah. their faces. It, it creates this like who's gonna find I feel like out it's what worse. they look like? It's yeah. like you have more pressure on yourself when you yeah. have these like so, restrictions. So you'll you'll probably see her here and there and like our own personal posts and things, but nothing's ever gonna center around her. Yeah. We don't want that. And specifically because of that question, do you think she'll be treated different? I don't want her to be. I don't think she will be by the time that she's old enough to know. Like, I feel like by the time she's old enough and in school or daycare with other kids that are also her age that would be old enough to watch my videos i feel like it's gonna be so far in the future that like yeah i i mean i'm that sure that age group probably won't even want to watch yeah. <laughs> me i mean i'm anymore. sure things will be different because of who we are and our jobs and whatnot but it's we don't want it to be yeah. like 
a major impact on her life. We want like we want her to grow up as yeah. Quote, I want her quote, to do, normal as yeah. we. I don't want people did. to be able to Google her name and be like, oh, look at all these videos of her like yeah. throughout her life and yeah. But that's yeah. just our. That's, that's how we. That's what we want to do. Other people do that or want to do it. That's fine. That's what they want to do. Constantly asking us on Twitter or in comments, "How you doing? How's the video? How's this?" I know dare you, you ask I, how I'm doing. I know you care and I know you want to know, but. When every single, like, I'm not going to just go, oh, she's good, she's good, she's yeah. good. Oh, you want me to give you an update? Like, oh, she's having cramps today. Or, like, <laughs> just let us have our lives. We will share what we want to share. I'll link our socials. He posts a lot. I, I've i been posting here and there when I'm able to or have the energy to. But, yeah, now that this video is up, that means every video after this is me filming after the baby. So, yeah, don't ask where the baby is. She's fine. Somebody's <laughs> watching her. It's most likely Bob. <laughs> She's good. Don't worry. I would not leave her unattended. <laughs> but yeah, I have started filming again. Obviously, every week's gonna be different. I'm gonna hope that I can keep up with the regular like three to four a week. If something happens that's beyond my control during the week in our personal lives with the baby or the dog or whatever, I will let you guys know. But yeah, that's it. We wanted to just share Melody in a proper video, probably for the last time in a while. Yeah. If you want to see anything about like our regular lives and things, that's on our social medias. If you have more questions, you can ask them in the comments below and I will try to scan through and type out whatever answers. Thank, thank you to our parents for helping us. Yes, <laughs> thank you very, very much for all of the help we yep. Very much appreciated it, and it has made things way easier. Thank you to you guys for being so supportive and interested and um, still watching my videos while I was on my maternity leave. All right, we're gonna go be with the baby now. <laughs> Love you guys, and I will, oh, and we will see. I'm so rusty. It's been a month. You guys see. Bye-bye.